you know, keeping Lisa on her toes, although she doesn't seem to have any problems staying on her toes, does she? K2 men, 200 meters final. Two teams from Sweden, two teams from Australia. Great Britain, possibly the, the form team in lane number five. Two teams from Canada as well. We've got uh, lots of representation from the, uh, the Commonwealth countries and also uh, one from Belgium and one from Italy and lanes one and nine. Well, these are pretenders. These are the under 23s, Ernest and Lilia. They haven't actually, the, the senior Swedish team are the team that are going to go for the Worlds, but the pretenders are, are up to, uh, to take a scalp today. Well, it's uh, a good opportunity for them to race against a world-class field. This is a certainly a top-notch final. Uh, two or three of the crews have medaled at the World Championships before. Got a little bit of a mix-up between the two Canadian crews. Uh, we're used to seeing Ugg Fresnel and Ryan Cochran, and right now we see Etienne Morneau with Ugg Fresnel. Uh, Etienne's raced uh, with all the guys, but they're trying every combination to try to see which which pair is the uh, is the best. Here we see uh, Jesse Phillips and Stephen Bird from Australia, from Perth, Australia. These guys have been together forever, it seems, and they're staying over for the entire entire summer to uh, to train with these two gentlemen, Liam Heath and Johnny Schofield. Do you want to say a thing or two about them? Yeah, I heard um, the other day that they're coming for five weeks to train with them. Um, I think it's a very good decision to make because they're so professional and they work extremely well together and they're the most consistent people out there. There's no one else that medals every time they race. Um, so these guys will be looking to catch him and try and be more consistent. We just saw Eric Svensson and Christian Svanquist from Sweden and then of course uh, Mark Alexander Gagnon and Ryan Cochran from, from Canada. Uh, Kenny Wallace and Lockie Tame, great to see them on the line in the 200 meter final. Obviously silver medalists yesterday in the K2 1000 and then uh, Yori and Jonathan from uh, from Belgium, young guys in the uh, K2 200. And Kenny and Lockie, they look looks like they're just having so much fun out there. They are, and uh, I think a lot of it has to do with Lockie's attitude. The guy's just so positive and really easy to be around. And yesterday uh, I was watching them in the K4 200 meters with uh, all, all four of them here in Kamita Day in the boat. They were just laughing their heads off after the race. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really good time. You can see through social media what a good time the Aussies are having together. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, another false start for the 200-meter uh, the men on the line here. It'll be interesting to see how Lucky and Kenny do in this 200 field. Seems they medal in the 1,000. It's quite a big jump in well between. Kenny, you name better than most, I suspect, Adam. But uh, first weekend, we had him in the commentary box in Montemore through Skate. He said he feels like a bit of a fraud only competing in one weekend, in one event, rather. So in Duisburg, he went and won pretty much everything. He won the 500, the 5,000, and came second in the second in the K2, yeah, 1,000. Nobody's so going to accuse Kenny of feeling like a fraud. And I think he, he, he managed himself. Yeah, he managed his... Uh, his energy really well over these three weeks, racing, uh, you know, choice events and piling up here in the uh, the final. The boys are off. You can see the Brits and the Swedes in the middle of your lane, as well as uh, the Canadian crew of Mark Alexander Gagnon and Ryan Cochran in lane seven. Well, the Brits in your action, really putting it powerfully down in the middle of your picture. Looks like the Swedes to me in lane four. Really, really hard to tell. The Brits and the Swedes and the other Canadian crew. It's too close to call at this stage. So many strokes going on. Really, really strong finish from the second Aussie crew of Kenny and Lockie. So Great Britain are going to take the victory by about a quarter of a length from, looks like Sweden, with in lane oh. number eight. Kenny I can Lockie. confirm Kenny and Lockie in bronze medal <laughs> position there. Pretty amazing, those 1,000-meter guys <laughs> coming through in the 200. Wow, I mean, it's, it's maybe a bit of a stretch to call Lockie a 1,000-meter guy. He's only just recently switched to 1,000, so he's still got good 200-meter form. And having trained with Kenny as much as I have, I can tell you he's really, really fast off the line. And he might have reacted first there, actually. Impressive racing from the Aussies, from the, the Swedes, and from the Brits. But the the specialists of this sport, the Olympic bronze medalist, uh, Great Britain, it looks like in the end they managed their, controlled their race. Yeah, very, very impressive. They're, they are maybe one of two crews out there using the, uh, the Quattro, uh, or sorry, the new Cinco K2. But really, as, as uh, was pointed out, so consistent from these guys. We can always expect a medal from these guys when they line up always on form. And Liam Heath is quite fast in the 200 individual. Mm -hmm. mm, him and Ed McKeever have a good head-to-head -head at our nationals. It's a good race. Well, confirmation of the result. Great Britain, unofficial rather, Great Britain gold, Sweden silver, and Australia given the bronze with Canada and Canada coming uh, really closely up together. Yeah, very close. For, it's going to make Fred Joe Bain's job a little bit more difficult, unfortunately, trying to stay.